you're determining if you're going to get less muscle and actual fat gain versus literally seeing fat loss and more growth. So yes, we're talking about insulin, optimal use for building muscle, burning fat, but this is according to doctor recommendations. You should all get your doctor consult, liveforeverlab.com, according to your doctor supervision, use insulin only. But here's some things you might want to talk to your doctor about. Traditionally, you used a fast-acting insulin or a slow-acting insulin or a combination of both, but Tyann has discovered that um, it may be better to use the fast-acting insulin but inject it more frequently to get more of the benefits and less of the side effects for insulin. So instead of just taking one giant shot in the morning of a long acting insulin, you can actually get some of the same benefits with less drawbacks by taking a short acting insulin injected more frequently. And this is according to a medical study that you reviewed, right? And then you extrapolated like how would this potentially affect someone who's also involved in, in bodybuilding? So what, so what's the traditional, like the benchmark test or use of the rapid insulin versus like this new potential uh, approach of using rapid insulin? Cool. It was a really awesome study for bodybuilders. And uh, basically what they did was they took the normal three, three meal a day pattern where people um, took three, three bolus shots of uh, rapid insulin and bolus is, you know, like one big injection, even if it's not big. So as an example, they did uh, 10 IU a meal for three meals a day, equaling 30 IU a day. And then they had another group where, where they would do example uh, 3.3 IU, equaling the 10 IU, but based over like three shots as an example, just within within a short time frame still, but just not all at once. So, you know, you do one at the beginning of the meal, one at the end, one maybe an hour later, still equaling 10 IU within each meal. And what was literally basically mind blowing here is that the group who split up the same IU dosage uh, within their meal not only had more muscle gain, but they had fat loss. And the difference here is that the other group had less muscle gain and they had fat gain. So literally the way you use your insulin didn't, it wasn't mattering uh, what they ate and the amount of calories they ate or what form of insulin because it's the exact same insulin. You're determining if you're going to get less muscle and actual fat gain versus literally seeing fat loss and more growth. And especially for bodybuilding results, who'd ever want fat gain and who wouldn't ever not want fat loss while they're getting more muscle growth, right? Wow. So, so I'd say like a standard low bodybuilder dose of insulin that where the bodybuilder is insulin sensitive. And so they don't need a huge dosage, uh, maybe like five units of rapid insulin, right? So let's say, oh, let's round it up to six. So instead of six units injected at the beginning of the meal, you're saying two units at the beginning of the meal, two units 30 minutes later, two units 30 minutes an hour after that, this type of thing. So same amount of dosage of rapid insulin, but just break it up into more shots within that period of time. And then uh, the insulin pen for these rapid ones, it's so easy. You put a needle tip on and you can just click, click, boom, click, click, boom. Ah, it's like the song. So that would be really, it would be easy. That would be convenient, right? Just click and then boom. And you could just do that every four, 30, 45 minutes instead of just one shot, right? It's that simple. Yeah. And I think another way to look at it, even though they didn't test it, but logically, you, you know, let's say somebody doesn't want to inject uh, three times each meal. Well, logically, you could look at this. If the you splitting it up and just getting that better dosaging, I would see no reason why you not even splitting up to two shots, maybe not might not have the exact same amount of extra muscle growth and extra fat loss. But literally, this as the study was looking, the more you split it up, the more benefit in both areas you got. So you know, same deal, if you don't even want to do three, I would well, I wouldn't suggest but I'm just saying, you know, one could even use two. So yeah. So maybe maybe what I would do, let's say I'm doing the good old like Coach Trevor and I used to do the growth hormone and insulin before the workout in a lower dosage, but then maybe take a higher dosage after the workout. So I guess we could do a couple units of growth hormone before the work it, workout with just a couple units of insulin, not enough to mess with blood sugar so much that it makes you dizzy during the workout or something. And then after the workout, pound a protein shake, pound all the post-workout nutrition, take another two units, and then eat a meal. And after finishing eating the meal hit another two units of insulin. And now within a three hour period of time, we've hit a total of six units of, of insulin, but it's a little bit more spread out in three servings. And I think at those times it's convenient, right? It's like before the workout, after the workout, and then after the meal. So yeah, maybe that's, maybe that's optimal. I'll have to try that. Yeah.
and I wonder, you know how there's so many people out there be like, oh, I felt like I got fat off insulin or this or that. And I wonder how many people just screwed themselves over by doing that one bolus dose here and there through the meal, during work or whatever. And it's like, hey, if you had to just split that up equally, you would have saw the actual fat loss benefit. Yeah. So so then there's also um, at insulin that not rapid, but fast, which is slower than rapid. So like rapid insulin, like a Novolog or a Humalog, it like hits in like 10 minutes and then it peaks in whatever, 30 minutes, uh, you know, and then pro- within, within a couple hours, the levels are, are low, but it's still working for potentially four or five hours, but the level it drops way off. But what, what about using then like a Novel and R? Like if we just, I know that the study didn't cover this, but like a Novel and R is, is it's a much more stable five hours of insulin levels than a Humalog. Then it, then it seems like maybe that, uh, is like the perfect balance between like fast and slow insulin? Possibly not because, uh, so this is another thing I was going to mention here. When they're looking at longer insulins like Lantus, et cetera, like the good, you know, that's about 16 hours and I think technically makes it to 24, but it's barely in there. Um, <clears throat> so the longer the insulin was, the better muscle growth it was, yes. But it could not mimic, it would still have fat gain. That is a thing. The yeah. only thing where it showed a direct difference where it went from, hey, like the bolus rapid, I'm getting fat gain still like the insulins would do. The only difference that caused even more muscle growth with the reversal and actually caused fat loss was dosing the rapids frequently. So who knows if that medium chain, I, I would still think based off the study, you would need to do that medium insulin, still do it frequently versus that one dose of long. Because like I said, the, the Lantus, didn't have the, the fat loss benefit as the rapid broken up. Wow. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Because even with a, with a regular insulin or the fast insulin, the Novel and R type insulin, like the curve is going to kind of look, well, it's got a bump and, but it's going to kind of yeah. look like that, but maybe these spikes like these rapid insulin, two unit spike and then come down and, and, Maybe maybe those spikes are are helpful in the rapid come down. Like I can see the difference. Like there's definitely a difference in how the graph would look injecting two units of rapid insulin three times versus one shot of Novo and R or a Lantus shot. Like the curve would look different. So something about these spikes may be the key. And it wasn't, you know, they didn't come up with any explanation or conclusion in the study, but like that really is the only thing that can make that can make sense. I mean, that's the only thing going on. Exactly. Like you said, you look up any graph of Lantus like that or Humalog like this, and it's like the only difference is you're getting that now, basically. So it's the only thing that would make sense. So I I brought my SARMs so I can try taking my SARMs more frequently to keep stable blood levels like we talked about. I don't have halo testing on me. I have to wait till get back to Thailand to do your halo testing experiment. And I didn't bring insulin, but I was so close to bringing insulin. Like I had the pen in my hand. I'm like, ah, oh, I'm not going to work out hard enough in Philippines. To, the gym's not so good in Philippines. I'm not going to work out hard enough in Philippines to warrant using insulin. But I do this every time. Every time I travel, I'm like, ah, oh, I don't need the insulin. I'm like, oh, I wish I brought insulin. And then I go running around all the pharmacies trying to get trying to get insulin so i might end up <laughs> i might end up <laughs> uh, yeah. so uh, so i'll do some experiments and i'll touch base with you and let you know how it, how it goes yeah. all right thanks Diane. that's good info i like i always like your innovation and uh, creative awesome. ideas and experiments looking forward yeah, to the next good. one it's good being on again <laughs> okay